Hey, welcome back to the 69 Pillars of Success, friends. We're getting close to the end of this thing, and I hope you've kept up to this point because we've covered a ton of content. Today's pillar is going to be about not taking action until you can see the whole picture. Okay, now, that may fly in the face of some of our previous videos where we talked about not, al not allowing perfection to become the enemy of success, right? We said Colin Powell was quoted as saying, you can go to war with 40% of the information, right? So, is there a perfect ability to see the whole picture before you take action? No, but see enough of it, see enough of it before you make a big decision or take a big action. And you'll find in life, the most successful people in the world are able to deal with ideals that contradict each other, but taking the merits from both or all three or all eight of them and applying them in their lives in a way that gets them from the point A to the point B that they're dreaming about that they have in their hearts and in their minds, right? So yes, I'm saying don't allow perfection to become the enemy of success, but at the same time, don't move out towards success until you have enough perfection, enough information, right? You don't have to be perfect, but you should be good enough before you do it. And that's really, that'll help you balance between both of those ideals. But here, Warren Buffett has a really awesome quote, and I'm pretty sure it was him that said it, and I'm sure there's people before him that said it, but never argue with somebody unless you understand and can argue their perspective better than they can. What do I mean by that? Meaning, if you are, let's say you're a far left Democrat liberal, and you're arguing with a far right uh, Republican conservative, right? And I get that those labels are kind of squishy when it comes to different people label themselves differently. But the point is, too often on the internet, I see people screaming their ideals at each other, and they're not listening, right? They're making decisions and making judgments about other people without all the information. When you research somebody else's point, and you understand where they're coming from, even if you disagree with it, it helps you develop a sense of respect and empathy for them, despite the fact that you disagree. Because when did hurtling insults at anybody or screaming at somebody about how wrong they are ever win anybody to your cause? I mean, did you scream at somebody down the street for me, you're racist and you need to change? And they're like, you know what? You're exactly right. I need to change my ways. No, right? And I'm not giving credence to racism. I'm just saying that our behavior right the way we want to win people over to the way we see things uh, if that's even possible has to see the whole picture right I see that if you've ever seen the movie Malcolm X or X with Denzel Washington it was interesting when Malcolm X who was part of the nation of Islam which was a derivative of Islamic faith was debating with a Christian person and he understood the Bible more than the Christian person did. He understood the perspective to be able to have the argument. Right? But if we take it out of politics and religion, I just use those as illustrative points. Let's move into making decisions that actually affect your life in a positive way. The simple fact of the matter is, before you make a huge life decision, get some more facts, get some more of the picture around you. You know, I told a story, I was on stage doing a panel several months ago uh, speaking at an event, and I was asked to speak on the idea of systems thinking, right? It's the ability to detach yourself, to not personalize situations, and see the bigger picture before you make decisions, judgments, or take action. And I told a story from my time in the Army where we got this new boss who was not like our old bosses in that he was pushing us and pushing us and pushing us and making us go out and train, go out and train, go out and train. And the lifestyle that we had up to that point was kind of like we trained, but it wasn't all this time away from our families, time away from other things that we enjoy, just spending so much time training. And it gave a lot of people in the organization, and myself included in the beginning, kind of this bad taste in our mouth, like, why is this dude beating the crap out of us? But he saw something coming that I think a lot of us didn't see, which was we were eventually going to be in a war. And in order to be successful there, we had to be experts in our jobs so that we could survive, fight, and win. When I look back, I remember the second night of combat, and uh, we had just gone through this really intense assault uh, to secure one of the airfields in Iraq and 
you know, we finished it, we got on the other side of it, and I ran up on, you know, my, my brother in arms, the, the guy that was in charge of my sister unit. And we were just kind of having a breather, like, yeah, man, we're getting it done. And he said to me something out loud that I was thinking, but I was a little scared to say it out loud. And he said, yo, B, this feels like another training exercise. And I'm like, yo, you're right. And the reason why it felt that way was because we had been trained so much that by the time we got to the real show, it felt like just another training exercise because we were well prepared. And in that moment, I saw the bigger picture of our boss was getting us ready for like all that pain we were going through. And you know, my limited tunnel vision was like, man, this guy just hates us. But then you realize, no, he actually loves us because he's trying to prepare us for something that we don't see coming and he does. Right? And that's what I want you to, I want you to take that stance with your life. When you're making a decision, let's say, whether or not you're gonna go to college. Before you pull the trigger, you know, and if you grew up in a family like mine, you didn't not go to college. It wasn't an option. But in 2018, one of the things I'm looking at with my children is, well, wait a minute, depending on what you want to do, getting into hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt, if you don't get some type of scholarship, may not be worth the education that you're getting. Now, I'm fortunate. I had people take care of me, look out for me. I went to school on a scholarship, right? And that's really thanks to my father. It was no, I did nothing to deserve that. It was just something that my father took care of for me. I went to school on a scholarship, so I didn't go into debt, so it made sense. I don't, you know, I owed time back to the army because the army was who paid for my scholarship. But, you know, before you pull the trigger, get the whole picture. Like, if you want to be an entrepreneur, there's, you know, if you want to own a business, there's very few college courses that are going to help you do it in a way that's very successful because the way to run a business is to start and run a business, right? You can learn, you know, like, and people say, well, what about business school? I'm like, well, business school was created to train people to run other people's companies, not to start their own, not to deal with the droughts of no customers, not to deal with how do I market, not to deal with how do I make my product better, how do I manage the 900 things that are going on and prioritize and execute. A lot of that you just learn by doing it. How do I know if my product is good? You put it out in the market and the market tells you if your product's good. You don't really need a college education to teach, I just taught you that, there you go, free. So think, before you make big life decisions, make sure you are seeing the whole picture. You're not doing this tunnel vision thing where it's like, ah, right? You can open it up, see the whole picture before you act. All right, I love you guys always. And ladies, I say guys generically, hopefully that doesn't offend anybody. And for the three of you that it does offend, you know, keep coming back. You'll get this content into your heart and mind. It'll help you grow and not be so easily offended. I love you all much. We are stronger than I. I'll see you soon.